Last week, we looked at creating a long-term speaking uh, growth plan. And I gave you a simple checklist of examples of confidence, delivery, and structure goals. This week, we are going to look specifically at confidence goals. If we take the first goal from the checklist, it reads, I feel at ease being the center of attention. I am comfortable in front of small and large groups. At first, a goal like that might trigger fear, perhaps the fear of being seen. It might trigger judgment, perhaps the idea that people who are comfortable with being the center of attention um, can become too selfish or too arrogant. Um, we're going to look at how you move past these kinds of fears that can come up and we're going to talk about how to create confidence. Yes, it's something that you create. You don't earn it and then have it forever like a degree. It's also not something that is given to you from the external world. You really create it within yourself from a series of moments where you decide to create confidence. What is confidence? Well, Brendan Brashad, the world's number one peak performance uh, coach, researched this extensively and he discovered that confidence, real confidence, is basically a belief and a set of feelings. So the belief behind real confidence is, I can do it and it will go well. And then the set of feelings behind real confidence is, I feel willing, I feel worthy, and I feel capable. All of that together creates real, genuine, authentic confidence. So let's look at this idea of I am willing. Have you ever done something that you just, you didn't really want to do? It's not a good feeling, is it? I'll give you an example also of how important it is to get to the place of being willing as a step toward building confidence. Quick anecdote. My son uh, went through a phase where he was a bit scared of water and uh, it was unfortunate because I was starting to take him swimming at the time and he enjoyed the water but he was afraid of it and so he would cling on to me and did not want to let go and he was just his experience of being in the pool was just clinging on to me and enjoying floating in the water a little bit. And I thought to myself, I have no idea how I'm going to start to help him learn to swim. Until one day he saw some boys jumping into the pool. And I could see something clicked for him. Almost like he was thinking, oh my gosh, maybe one day I could jump in the pool. That would be exciting. And he became willing to do the task of learning to swim. He let go of me. He was willing to do it and really quickly he made progress and one session after swimming on his own he jumped in the pool and absolutely loved it now if he hadn't decided that he was willing to try willing to learn willing to go through the process of finding out how you swim then i don't think i could have taught him he had to come to that place of willingness first so are you, are you willing to do the different kinds of challenging speaking tasks and, and different things that you need to do to improve your speaking? How do you feel about the speaking tasks that you do right now? Are you entering into them willingly? Okay, I am worthy. It's really important that you find your sense of worthiness um, when you are going into something that you need to create confidence. So have you had an experience often in your life where you're supported by people? Or has your experience been that people uh, tell you to your face or behind your back that you are not enough? You need to really tap into what is your own sense of worthiness? Like, 
I am worthy of doing well in this experience. And part of doing that is to reward yourself along the way, be gentle with yourself and and celebrate your progress along the way. Okay, you do need to feel capable based upon real skills that you have. Think of a surgeon, for example, feeling willing and feeling worthy doesn't mean that they should be jumping into surgery. They also have had to do lots of learning and building skills in order to feel confident. So part of confidence is is genuinely that you have the skills you are working on learning and growing and changing and developing your skill set. The hallmarks of real confidence are what Brendan Burchard calls the three A's of confidence, authenticity, action, and adaptability. So if you are able to be authentically yourself in any difficult speaking situation, that is a hallmark, as in an indication, that is a hallmark of confidence. If you have to kind of fake it till you make it or pretend to be someone else, that that's not real confidence. So real confidence is I can be myself in any difficult situation. Action, I can take action. I do not get stuck in overwhelm or procrastination. I can take action even if it is a small step forward. And then the last hallmark of real confidence is that even in a difficult situation, I can learn, change, and grow. My confidence is not attached to one way of doing something. And if suddenly I have to do it a different way, I don't feel confident. So those are really key indications or hallmarks of of real confidence. Then lastly, I'll say that creating confidence is a process that you continually need to go through. You need to decide that you're willing to go through that process of creating confidence in a new skill. You need to build self-trust by taking small steps outside your comfort zone. You need to, of course, build your skills by practicing different types of speaking. And you need to get out there and build real world experience. You need to speak in public. You need to do different types of speaking, whether it is speaking one-on-one, speaking in groups, speaking with native speakers, doing some debating, doing presentation. You need that real world experience. Um, could be online, but, but it needs to be with people so that you are in front of people, building your confidence in front of people. And then you need to be generous with yourself and with others. Being generous with yourself is building up your sense of worthiness by celebrating yourself along the way, being kind to yourself. Being generous with others means that you focus on the message that you are sharing, what information or advice or, or you know, wonderful insight are you sharing with that person in front of you or that audience in front of you? And can you focus on that and focus on helping them Because that will build your confidence. It will take away all the focus on you and how you feel and can put the focus on how you are helping, which is very transformative um, because suddenly it's a bigger purpose than just you speaking well. It is you being generous with your advice, insight, and knowledge and putting the focus on helping people versus just you speaking well. So if you put all of those things together, you are more than capable of creating confidence. But the one thing that I want you to take away from this week's video is that it is something that you create through intention and internally within yourself. Okay, let's jump into the action steps. 